Welcome back, friends. JT McRoberts here with you from Comic Jutsu once again. And today we're going to talk about uh, something that's popped up in the comic news cycle this week. The topic of big publishers using AI generated art. Okay, now I'm going to give you an attention span warning up front. I just like to talk as a normal person. I don't have a lot of jump cuts for those of you that need it. They can't pay attention, so this is not an airport. No need to announce your departure. Just go ahead and take your leave now. Thanks. Now, if the rest of you are ready to settle in and talk to old JT, let's see if we can get a little bit of a back and forth. Though there's not going to be so much of a back coming from you towards me because I'm just going to share my opinion about this and as far as I'm concerned it's it's immutable and unchangeable because some interesting things happened this week yes here's a nice piece of artwork by an Italian artist and there was quite an uproar created when allegations of this being AI art were first surfaced and you can kind of see the traces of it here you've got Lex Luthor in an odd Joker suit you got Lois Lane with the oddball button right there most dampening of all down here the Superman logo it's a little bit foobar there one of the most iconic comic book superhero symbols of all time is screwed up so the long and the short of it is this. AI art is here. It's here to take your job. It's not going away. It's only going to get worse. And it's going to be lauded. There you go. That's <laughs> that's the end of it. <laughs> now I can just close this, this stream out. Yeah, you, you didn't think I'd get to the point right away, but there you go. Now the question is, how did we actually get to this point? Well, here we have Adi Granov, who alleges that serial plagiar plagiarist, I say alleged, Francesco Mattina is using AI art for official DC publications. Here he says, when it when image generators first came to prominence, the first person who came to mind was the serial plagiarist Francesco Mattina. As I thought, he'd think all his Christmases have come at once. If you don't remember, he made a whole career out of photobashing other people's, people's art, mine included. This is uh, Adi Granov speaking into whatever you want to call his work, in quotes. I don't post about artists I dislike, but I neither consider him an artist, nor can I hide my dislike for the continued blatant plagiarism. Anyhow, here's his new cover. Not only is he a hack, but he's not even good enough to hide the glaring mistake on one of the most iconic symbols in all of pop culture. There you go. And he points out the little glitch there at the bottom of the Superman logo. And boy, did this start an S-storm. Now let me put on my old man glasses so I can see while I read this to you. Now the question is, how did we get here? And you probably won't believe me when I say, I saw it coming all along. It goes back to this man. The venerable Jack the King Kirby. Once upon a time, Jack found out his original artwork that he drew for comic book pages, like, like you see here on his drawing board ahead of him, in front of him, was being resold on the secondary market. That the artwork that he turned into Marvel and was told was either lost or destroyed was reappearing in convention spaces or at hotels adjacent to conventions and being sold to individuals for money. This money was neither offered nor given to Jack Kirby. So, he had to go through the process of suing for his original artwork to be returned to him. And he also went through the process of saying, you know what, I created these characters. I should own a piece of them. 
And boy, did that start a whole S-storm of its own back in the day. Because that led to a lawsuit. Will Marvel return Jack Kirby's art from Marvel? No comment. And this, uh, this seemed to be the beginning of a revolution of sorts for comic book artists and creators. Um, even though ultimately Kirby was unsuccessful in, in getting the return of all of his art, he, he was given some of it back. He was not granted ownership over the Marvel characters that he created. Like this. These guys. Yeah, the big ones. Those all came from him. Now, mind you, you know, Stan Lee had his part in putting the voice and perhaps, we'll say, some of the charm into some of these characters, but I would say it's probably a 75-25 relationship, if not like a 95-5% relationship to the contributions from Stan, because you had Jack was the one breaking all of this stuff down, like a director, like a cinematographer, editing it, putting it all together, and then Stan would come to Jack's finished product and then put words in and in a lot of cases Jack had even already put dialogue suggestions down so all Stan had to do was change it and usually he tried to go very much against whatever Jack was was putting on in the margins of his boards in my opinion to he was doing this to justify it like oh look how fancy my writing is whatnot but this is neither uh, you know, this is not a stand bashing <laughs> video. If you're, if you want more info on that, I do suggest uh, that you check out the Facebook Marvel, the Facebook group called the Marvel Method, and they will tell you more about it. Said lawsuit led to depositions from then editor in chief Jim Shooter about the creation of said characters and said comic books. And Jim Shooter said, Marvel Comics is the creator of these characters. There was no point where they ever wanted to give an inch of credit to Jack Kirby. Because they knew if they did that, they could risk losing the entire thing. Um, I do highly recommend that you check out the... Um, the uh, the audio the I don't know what you call it the audio play the the reading of the transcriptions of these depositions over at the cartoonist cafe channel uh, because it's it's very fascinating um, where Ed and Jim go through and they read the various parts of the people involved uh, straight from the transcripts as published by the Mighty Comics Journal as you see here on the screen. Okay, but the long and the short of it is, is that everyone came through, and if they were working for Marvel at the time, they towed the Marvel line, whether that was John Byrne saying, hey, we knew that com becoming a part of Marvel meant we were making these for Marvel, Marvel's the creator, or Jim Shooter saying, we created these books. You know, it wasn't just Jack by himself, but it was everyone working together as a whole. And that's pretty much my reasoning behind why this AI art is not going away because believe me, there's some editor right now at Marvel and DC sitting there thinking, like, man, am I sick of dealing with these these uppity artists and writers wanting to get paid, wanting more work, wanting this, wanting that, when I'm the one giving them all the ideas, I'm the one doing all the hard work, I'm the one figuring out how all this fits together, you know, they're just following my lead. So why shouldn't I type a prompt into a computer and voila, here's my artwork. Or type a prompt into a computer and voila, here's my story. Because it came from my Batman idea, my Superman idea, my Spider-Man idea. And I am the true creator. Even though I don't actually write it and I don't actually draw it. It's not going away. It's only going to get worse. So that laid the foundation for where we are today. Bingo. Bada bing, bada boom. And this is how we got here. Because um, I'm not throwing shade at anyone specifically, but 
I will talk about the re-education of a generation or uh, the brainwashing of a generation beginning with the advent of piracy digital downloading okay because we have multiple generations that believe it is their right to digitally download anything that's created by anyone anywhere anytime now this is not a matter of preservation of let's say you know out of print versions of films like something like the Star Wars films that where we aren't able to have access to the original versions of those films and the people that might pre pre prefer them are trying to preserve them and make them available digitally under the caveat that you're supposed to own some kind of version of the physical media in order to keep the digital media Okay, not talking about just that, but we're talking about people that believe, you know, the IP rights and laws are bogus, that anything created should be theirs for free by right of its existence coinciding at the same time as their existence. And I know some of you are watching this and your butthole is just burning red hot right now, okay? But this is the truth. You believe this. Okay, number two, American Idol. Yes. It's the show that told everyone, you're special, you're the next great thing. But as it filtered them through one by one and told them individually, you're not special, you're not great. You should give this up. Go back to flipping burgers at the Waffle House or throwing chairs at the Waffle House <laughs> to be uh, more precise. Um, it also introduced the, this notion of a creative dialectic between people that are not creative and the individuals who are creative because Simon Cowell is a completely non-creative okay he's just a big mouth okay and these are his children these are his children the AI creators of today okay they believe that uh, your song is my song that was another part of American Idol was that it didn't it didn't foster a culture of creativity okay it fostered a culture of mimicry it was a matter of who could put the most interesting spin on this already created work and I, I've hated that show since its inception because of this because they didn't take these individuals and refine them and try to help groom them artistically and encourage them to create something new and unique rather they tried to get them to fit into whatever hole they were presented with whether it was a square hole round hole so on and so forth it was which one of you can fit into this hole the best that's the one that will be the american idol but it was that back and forth this notion of you're terrible this sucks you're awful give it up and it gave non-creatives an ownership over anything creative, okay, that they could just instantly just dismiss it all, no matter how much time and practice and work that one had put into it. That helped create that atmosphere, okay? So now we kind of see that carried on today where anytime anyone posts something that they've created online, if it's not just outright ignored or scraped by AI now you know that your work is being collected for AI purposes which is one reason why you'll never see why you don't see Mutantville projects easily accessible online is we work too hard to just give it away for free okay if you want to insult it at least you know pay for it and then you can insult it as a paying customer as per your right but you're not going to do it for free okay so you mix into that into this foundation the otaku culture. Here we go, down here at the bottom. If you don't see a problem with 15 Deadpools here, then you're never going to, okay? <laughs> Cosplay was really neat when it was limited to kids who were creating their own costumes. You would go, oh, hey, isn't that cute? Look at that kid. They've made a Deadpool costume. They've made a Spider-Man costume, you know, what have you. Or you had one or two individuals that were at conventions 
maybe five at most when this stuff you know was in its infancy here in the states outside of the costume contest i mean costume contest is a different story yeah everybody should dress up go go show off their costume but not you know walking around the convention as this character for three four five days straight in this costume or in multiple costumes okay that's when it became a problem when instead of like oh hey there's one cool deadpool costume it's like oh wow now there's a hundred deadpools here wow isn't this great so now you have a generation this otaku culture that's trained that their mimicry their unoriginality is originality that these characters are their characters they own them lock stock and barrel okay personally i think cosplay should be a little bit more regulated like people should sign up for it okay if you're an adult number one you should have to make your costume okay and then number two you should have to sign up for it like there should only be one adult deadpool at any of these shows that way you're like oh hey there's the deadpool not the plague of deadpools that run through these things acting like a bunch of unmitigated jerks okay and now we have AI art that is created from scraping other artists' work. It's bashed together, thrown back out as supposedly something original. Now, have I used AI generators? Yes, but only in the form of, like, say, online gaming. Or if I just need an image for something, you type in the prompt, boom, spits it out. Here you go. You've got an image for your game. It's not something that I try to present as my own creation to the world, okay? So, here you go. That's why you see down here, you see the the secret invasion image from the intro, which was all AI created, which was, as far as we know, the first instance of Marvel accepting this. Okay, now we've already heard the, the horror stories of the MCU mistreating their digital artists, forcing them to overwork, uh, making them, keeping them underpaid, okay? So now, here you have an entire sequence where they just bypass that entire process and some editor or slash producer of some sort just typed in their prompts and voila, here they go. They created um, an intro sequence for Secret Invasion. So that's how we got here, okay? So you have non-creatives, who believe they can denigrate anything that is creative. You have non-creatives who believe anything created is their creation. They're not in Deadpool costumes. They are Deadpool in their minds. If you haven't spent time around otaku, I can understand you not understanding this point. They believe they are those characters. They call them by names. They are their friends that they bring along with them. I'm bringing Deadpool to the convention. Believe me, they believe they are Deadpool. They believe they they own those characters lock, stock, and barrel. So here we go. Your lack of creativity is the new creativity. That's what you're getting here. Okay, now, like I said, I don't hate cosplayers. I just kind of hate otaku culture because of that. Because it just it celebrates a lack of creativity. And um, they have a way of turning any kind of convention that they're into into being just about them, whether they try to go and take over Q&A sessions or if they clog up the hallways or, um, you know, the dealer's room by just standing in the middle of the room so people can take pictures of them rather than, like, going outside into the open hallway or going, you know, all the way outside by the fountain or what have you to take pictures. You know, they just block up, they just create uh, traffic jams, you know, through the rooms and through the halls. And they are quite honestly a menace. Now, don't do anything to your local Deadpool. Just sharing my thoughts on this, okay? Mind you. All right, so brings us back to Adi Granov. Okay, so Adi Granov calls out Francisco Matina, as I said, for um, alleging that he, uh, you know, photo bashes everyone else's work, and he's using now AI art. Um, basically as the basis for what he's building his artwork from. Okay. Here we have 
Mahmoud Asrar. What's going on here? I'm feeling disappointment. Um, looking at Dazan, what, however you say that username, saying, I think this cover for Action Comics 1069 is AI generated. Look at the bottom of the S, which we see in the other, other image there. Comic book artist Valerie Sheeti, Mahmoud Asrar, and Adi Granov sharing their disappointment with DC's latest AI cover. Continued blatant plagiarism. Anyhow, here's his new cover. Not only is he a hack, but he's not even good enough to hide the glaring mistake on one of the most iconic symbols in all of pop culture. Okay, those are clips of other pieces of work that he's uh, that he's photo bashed. And here we see just the, the closer image of the the Superman S that's all screwed up. Now here's a good point on this. Okay, Neb's good takes. It's very important to be careful when accusing artists of using AI as these programs match the styles of prominent digital artists and blur the lines. Thankfully, I don't have to be careful here since Francisco Matina wasn't careful either. And he's alleging that he used AI for all of these images. Now, I think that Francisco, if this is true that he hasn't figured out, is it's only a matter of time until an editor figures it out. And they go without his work and they do their own. And there's so many errors on this too. Here the Daily Daily Planet, it, you know, it's cut off here at the edge. The S is screwy. The foreshortening's a little bit off. You know, the outfit, Lois's outfit is oddball. Yesterday, DC revealed their September 2024 solicitations in which Francesco Mattina has variant covers for Superman 18, Batman Brave and the Bold 17, and Action Comets 1069, 1069. 69, dude. People immediately noticed that all three of these seem to be AI generated. It does look cool, okay? They, I mean, they do look cool in this kind of modern, almost hyper-realistic hyper rendering. It, to, to me, it's kind of... Um, this modern trend of artwork, it seems almost like a callback to Neil Adams and a little mix of, of Alex Ross, but instead of, you know, using like photo references like those guys did and then creating their own work from it, some of them are allegedly using other artists um, as the foundation for their work or just straight up using AI, which steals from multiple artists as the foundation of their work. Okay, now if you're wondering what the general public thinks about these things, we'll get to that in just a second. Here, you've seen this topic covered a few times. Is this theft by Comet Tom 101, Francesco Matina, Art Thief uh, by Simple Man's Comics. Here they talk about um, his use of a Nova cover repurposed for a Flash cover. Here is a Batman cover, um, which was a repurposed Punisher image. Neb's good takes. At this point, you may have noticed that while Francesco Matina does trace from other artists, he still has the technical ability. He draws on digital art, yet still chooses to plagiarize regardless. Most likely because it's just quicker. Like, he can he can kit bash something together much, much quicker than building it from the ground up. And if you're getting paid the same rates for both, there you go. I mean, that's your answer. Something I've learned over the years... Um, the general audiences don't have integrity. You know, we talked about why, especially with modern audiences, because they believe your work is their work. They own it. Your characters are their characters. Your movies are their movies. Your song is their song. They deserve to own it because it exists. Because they exist. Okay? You may also be wondering why DC still works with him, and here's the answer. And I go through a few responses from the Peanut Gallery. Now here's another image. Uh, Francisco Matina created a, a cover for Batman Death and the Family. And uh, it's alleged that he stole this left side of the image, a uh, screen left, if you will, um, from this uh, Zine Chin artwork here on the left side. So he stole that piece, put it there right behind it. It is a cool cover, but again, you know, it's uh, pretty much a direct ripoff. Later in 2020, DC Comics rewarded Francisco Matina's theft by letting him design the box art for Batman Death and Family. Reddit user Beyond9000 
Notice the entire left side was traced from a piece by artist Zine Sheen. Additionally, while in the comics of Alex Gardner's post, I saw that Sean Strange C. posted this image showing Francesco Mattina. I also traced his variant for the Joker number one. Still at it too. There you go. A piece of artwork from Riot Games 2019 has been flipped, repurposed here in 2021. Adi Granov posted privately on Facebook, reprinted here with permission, naming no names, but we understand the allegations refer to Matina. I don't care to ruin anyone's career, but it's pretty interesting to watch some people's seemingly compulsive drive to burn their own. An artist who a few years ago found, got found out for photoshopping other artists' work into his own covers for major publisher got into quite a bit of trouble. He swiped some of my work, but I was more bemused than offended at the time, while a couple of other artists took it very badly. This artist spent years rebuilding his career and apologizing for his wrongdoing. He even had another prominent artist vouch personally to me about his reform. I took it for what it was. He has skill. He just needs to build on it. However, it seems that hard work is too hard and shortcuts are too tempting, and a number of artists are recognizing elements of their own work in his recent cover illustrations. Entire elements, especially more technical ones such as weapons and helmets, are taken directly from other people's pieces. Art done for one publisher by one artist is repurposed by him for another. Entire figures copied and smudged digitally, etc. I'm saddened by this as I dislike seeing any artist lose their livelihood, but he is seemingly completely unconcerned about either himself or any other artist he is stealing from. Shame. Ding, ding, shame, ding, ding, shame, ding, ding. From my understanding, out of respect for the creative community, Marvel Comics cut ties with Mentina in April last year. DC Comics seem happy to employ his much in-demand talent, especially on their variant covers. There we go. We see an original piece there, which was later repurposed by Mentina here. And here, you know, I mean, it's vague similarities, but there's always like a foundation that's almost like a direct copy, swipe, trace, whatever you want to call it, before the rest of it is repurposed. Walter then noted that Francisco Matina's variant cover of Batman 55 had also been traced from an older Batman commission by Gabriel Derotto, who, by the way, has also made prints for Sideshow Collectibles. Here's one where he's mimicked Judge Dredd, traced, photobashed, what have, what have you, allegedly. Francesco Matina blatantly traced a Judge Dredd piece by Greg Staples, who also has made art prints for Sideshow Collectibles. Okay, at the worst part about it is that it's incredibly disrespectful of everyone's time involved by seeking to save time for himself and profit from my original effort in creating that Punisher art. I had to waste more time preparing these anime gifts of Photoshop proof to document exactly how he manipulated the art and tried to cover his tracks. In addition, he's disrespectful of the wasted time of all the representatives from DC Comics, Sideshow Collectibles, and Frankie's Comics that will have to have conversations about how to handle the cross-brand embarrassment of official Marvel licensing art being repurposed for a DC cover. Not only that, but you know, the current law is that AI art cannot be copywritten. So if someone gets found out using AI, then they're making those images public domain, essentially. They can decide amongst themselves how much they care about the Grim Knight actually being unmasked as Frank Castle, but I refuse to let Francisco Matina Art think he can disrespect me by taking credit for and profiting from my labor without having to answer for it in the public sphere. So let's all make 2019 New Year's resolution to respect original art and those who make it. Unfortunately, something else happened on the way to the forum at the end of 2019 and the start of 2020. Two fans, please demand better of the artists you support. They won't. The fans won't. Unless they're an artist themselves who is not AI kit bashing, they won't. Because I already explained it to you. The fans own your character. The fans own your comics. They own your art. They own your film. They own your music. You created it. They exist. It's theirs by right of existence. They will not demand better of the artists you support. It is Lord of the Flies out here. I'm sorry that you're getting recycled Punisher art here instead of the original Batman cover art you paid for. To business art directors, please demand better of the artists you choose to represent your band, your brands. They won't. Because the business art directors 
are the creators. The editors are the creators. They just see an artist or a writer as a tool, no different than a pencil or a keyboard, that they operate to create the actual work. DC and Frankie's Comics, I'm sorry you're getting stolen and recycled art of another company's character here instead of the original art you commissioned and pay for. Lastly, to artists, please demand better from your fellow artists. Now that, some of us can do. So if I'm at a convention and I run into one of these guys, I don't have a problem saying something to them about it. But from what I understand, Francisco is in Italy, so I'm never going to interact with this guy. And it's probably why he doesn't care. So no one's going to Italy to argue with him. <clears throat> No one thinks they can stand on another person's shoulders to grab a paycheck and still be embraced by the rest of the community with open arms. And mind you, that community hates you anyway. It hates all of us. If they're in the community and you're outside of it, they hate you. They hate you for trying to get into it and trying to take their spot. So don't ever think that there's some sort of altruistic uh, intentions behind the word community because there isn't. They all hate you. If you want to be in it, they hate you, and most likely, if you're successful in it, they hate you. Just look at what they did to Ed Piscor, you know, a guy who at one point was proud that his books were selling more than the average Marvel comic book. And artists and writers and creators and non-creatives, especially, could not wait to tear him down and dance on his grave and spread salt on the ground and still to this day will try to piss on it. If you're okay with this type of behavior, then I expect you to label all of your own work as public domain clip art. Respect yourselves and your fellow artists enough to demand better of those with whom you stand shoulder to shoulder. Happy 2019. That was the last time we ever said that about a year. <laughs> Little did he know, 2020. Dun, dun, dun. Feel free to repost and share if you support original art. That's what we're doing here at Comic Jutsu. We do support original art. And we wish to further condemn this type of lazy behavior. Bad artist, bad artist, bad artist. Shame, shame, shame. And to you thieving fans out there, shame, shame, shame on you too. I'd also encourage all professional artists to take a gander at, at Francesco's gallery with a more scrutinizing eye, and you might just find some of your work has been borrowed as well. I'll follow up this post with another post highlighting some questionable similarities I noticed between Francesco's recent work and that of other professional artists. Okay, so anyway, here's the uh, Punisher piece in, in question. Okay, so the foundation is taken from this Punisher piece and applied to this Batman piece, and then it's kind of gussied up all around it to hide the fact that that's exactly what it is. And, and I would actually say this is probably one of the better ones. I mean, there are like slight changes to make it a little bit different. But um, you can tell that it's 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 all beneath there. And this is oddball. Was this an AI piece as well? You know, because it's got this... He's got a laser sight on his shoulder. What's he aiming his shoulder at? What the hell does that mean? And then he's got, like, this predator cannon. I mean, this looks like a piece of AI. This is a big piece of AI junk laid on here. Um, then he's gone in and laid in his smoke and whatnot and his little flourishes and this and that. Here is the flash piece in question, okay? And next to that, we see this um, time lapse. Well, not time lapse, but a comparison here of what of what the original Nova artist put together right there to show how that flash piece was um, basically photo bashed from his work, okay? And mind you, DC does not care. Um, we already talked a bit about Marvel and the Secret Wars thing. Um, expect this to be more and more common. More AI intros. I wouldn't be surprised if they just completely changed to AI intros for everything they do. They had a, a big justification about it. Oh, it fits the theme of the show and this and that. But if you wonder why I don't review like MCU films or even DC films at this point or Star Wars anymore is because that's what they want. A lot of those properties are being controlled by people that actively hate the product and they actively hate the people that consume it. So in their mind, 
if you hate watch it or talk about it in a negative fashion, it's still pressed to them. It's still getting them those 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 likes, those clicks, that attention that they want. It's keeping it in the internet cycle, which is hard to stay in because of the absolute insane world that we live in nowadays, this dystopia that we've become a part of. All AI art here. Um, so here, Neb's Good Take mentions a Bleeding Cool article talking about um, how Matina uh, phrased uh, traced Adi Granov's work allegedly for um, his Jean Grey venomized cover. That's definitely worth checking out if you want to look deeper into this. There's the original work. Here is a uh, sideshow piece that was um, used as the basis for um, this cover here by Matina. So, a lot of swiping going on from this guy in general. I mean, so in one way, this this video is about him, but it's also about just the larger problem. Here's the original work here, and it was flipped for this, flipped and tilted to make this um, this uh, Mary Jane picture, venomized picture here. I mean, the final product is nice. I mean, the guy does have some talent, but man, like, you can't hire a model. <laughs> one weekend to snap some photos give you something to to build your work on and there you go there's the original nova piece that he re allegedly repurposed for the flash yeah it's no big surprise that marvel and dc are doing this but surely the bastions of artistic integrity at image or formerly of image is is spawn even still at image i don't even know well, surely they wouldn't allow this. Well, guess what? Congratulations, Spawnuary 24 winners. And here we have Robot 9000, one of the winners for the Week 4 villain. Okay, congratulations, Spawnuary 2024 winners. Be on the lookout for a DM from us with the next steps. Thank you to the thousands that participated and made this contest awesome. You know, honestly, why does anyone participate in these things? If you're not 12 years old, why? if you're serious about creating uh, some sort of graphic work and putting it out into the world, why are you participating in this, thinking that you're going to be chosen and get some kind of exposure? You're not. I mean, it's going to be dismissed, okay? The best thing we can do as creative individuals is to focus on creating our own work, okay? That's always been my own mantra. Okay, so allegedly this Robot 9000 used um, the AI generator. Here are his prompts. Todd McFarlane, The Heap, watercolor design by Ashley Wood. And there's this one image. These are his actual prompts, allegedly, that uh, was captured from the program. Cyborg Gorilla, watercolor design by Ashley Wood. Volumetric lighting, award-winning design. These are the prompts. At least he added award-winning design on there so it would look good <laughs> and it is pretty cool but that's the thing with uh with ai's unless it's like a medium close-up they really start to get into a lot of trouble but you know we'll probably see almost like a fumetti era of comics like there's going to be a, a trend of fumetti comics it's just all these kind of medium close-ups you know um where they're they're hyper detailed and and they have uh you know, these really nice flourishes all around them, but the larger the picture gets, the more errors become evident in it. And here is the award-winning design. Omega Spawn design by Ashley Wood, 8K, highly detailed watercolor award-winning design. These are the prompts. That's what he did to create his award-winning design, allegedly. I say alleged because I want to stay out of this stuff legally, okay? Just as an artist, a creative individual, uh, that's why I'm sharing this stuff, just to uh, amplify the signal, not to, you know, stem the tide or put my finger in the dike, so to speak, but to, uh, you know, ring the bell in the wilderness and tell you, hey, the end times are here, man. This stuff is coming, and it's not going away. Now, is there any kind of happy medium? I mean, is there a world where... 
every image is followed by a complete list of the artist that it that it scraped to create this image and therefore you have sort of an homage of sorts in the credits you know because homage covers um have been a long-standing part of the comics industry and if you go back far enough to people like wally wood and whatnot i mean they did a fair amount of swiping on their own and uh you know the early years of of comic dumb are just ripe with artistic swipes you know artists that that copied everyone else's style because it was it was popular in demand at the time but this ai is taking it to the next level it really is it's taking it all the way to the next level even better reason to uh, just create your own work and put it out there. Here you see a collection of, of this guy's uh, AI prompts from that month. Pretty good detective work here by the guy that, that took the time to go in and find this because your prompts are listed in mid-journey. Anyone can find them just like this. So one would think that Todd McFarlane, of all people, who who left Marvel because they basically told them, you know, the artists are replaceable, that the, it's the writers that are important, it's the editors that are important, you know, the writers, the artists are nothing, the art is not important. They were the ones that catalyzed him to say, okay, let's go make Image, you know. You would think that they would be bastions of artistic integrity, but there you go, they're not. They are not. So... Let's take a look at some comments from the peanut gallery. And remember, I discussed how this foundation was laid. I discussed how this mindset was woven into the fabric of an entire generation. Okay, why uh, I've, I've tried to explain to you why, why people are going to come and attack me over this video. But I'm just going to say ahead of time, really don't care about your attacks. I just encourage you to keep that energy in person. If you really want to talk like that, don't be a keyboard warrior. Okay, so here we go. I haven't stopped buying his covers. If I'm an artist, I'll be mad too, but I'm only a consumer, and I like his covers, and I will continue to buy them. At least, you know, some of them are buying them. Great video as always, Brian, Jack, Ben, Nico. I think that as a fan, no matter how good an artist may be, once it's out that you're essentially seeing other artists work, you're going to have to prepare to lose all your fans. It's unfortunate because Matina is such a good artist, but it's just morally wrong. So many incredible artists out there trying to make it in the community don't need people stealing others' hard-earned work. Well, that's a really good response from the Downright Nerdy podcast. So, gold star for you, buddy. Here we have Resort Janitor. Still going to buy Matina covers. Rah! Matina can't file a defamation suit because he would have to prove not only that what the accusers were saying was untrue, but that they also knew they were lying about him and that they were lying about him in order to hurt him. There's literally no possible way he could prove any of that, even if it was true. It's a good comment from James Robertson, 5370. Uh, Justice for Comics 32. I think Matina is smart by ignoring all of it. Don't feed the beast. Paul Diggs Comics, 7810. Love that Garner Nova incentive. One of the few incentives I shelled out for. The main thing is that Matina is all digital. If you've ever met anyone who uses programs such as Photoshop, it's fairly easy to shop, to chop, crop, and layer scanned covers or photos. Big difference in paying homage to a classic cover than basically tracing. If he actually drew them or painted every cover, I think people would feel different. Um, there's actually a couple decent responses in there. Brick Hunter 9537. I stopped buying Matina cover after the Punisher Batman cover copy story broke. Anella 0708. Man, Matina all day. Fire, fire. Or whatever this is. It's not peace or I love you. It's He's throwing the Moloch at people, I guess. So, homage covers are bad too. McFarlane and Kirby should make a killing then. Slippery slope, says JJW238. So what? You still have to know how to draw, says X Men X Factor One. The worse the the names are, the dumber their comments are. You can see. Atkins Atelier. He's busy and gets lazy now and then, and overlays for ideas to speed up the process. Not saying it's right, but he seems but it seems to be his style. He likes doing homage covers in a way, right? McFarlane saved his ass. TVI Carella, you don't own a pose. Here you go. I guess if you write homage after or after artist, 
in quotes, in the corner, then it's okay. The only thing that I've seen that looks like he outright copied is the Punisher's gun, and I'm like, big deal. Musicians can sample all day long. Well, only because they did. Labels can copy clothing styles, and nobody bats an eye. I think most of this is straight up hate. Because the guy is damn talented, and people are mad because he does it with a computer. And last, Paul Flournoy, 7251. I love Matina's work and will continue to buy it. As for copying other artists' work, there are only so many poses that you could put characters in. Well, duh. Think about the millions of comics that have been made. Covers are going to be reproduced and sampled. So deal with it says the Deadpool gallery. So there you go. Like I said, it's only going to get worse. Jim Shooter told us all those years ago, Marvel is the creator of these characters, of these stories, of this art. That's how it goes. Okay, well, if you've made it this far with me, Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you take something from this experience. It's not very positive, but <laughs> not very positive message I'm sending out there. But if there is a positive spin I can put on it is let this embolden you as a creative person to get over that dream of saying, man, I wish I could do Superman books one day. Man, I wish I could write Spider-Man one day. And create your own work. You know, I've always been a big proponent for original work, original ideas, because we need new ideas. We need them for today. I do believe that superheroes are a mythology. They're a mythology for the times in which we live in. Superman was created in 1938. That was a long, long time ago. We're, we're nearing, you know, 100 years. We're not far off from it that he's been around. So we need new characters for the new age. Every now and then, original ideas do pop up. And they, they break out of the comic sphere and they, they become a, a part of the larger culture. You know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is like the your example of it. Okay, or Hellboy from the 90s. To a lesser degree, Spawn. I mean, there are some people who understand that Spawn exists outside of, you know, comic fans. But Hellboy made that bigger leap. It, it's, it's appeared in much more media, I believe. But as creative individuals, we all have that thing inside of us. Okay, here's, here's my message! Message! And if you don't look within to try to find those answers to the ills that plague the world today, if you've, you've got a problem with the wars going on, you've got a, a problem with the, the racial inequality happening, or the rich continuing to take advantage of the poor, you know, you've got to look inside to find those answers and say, how can I craft a story that addresses these ills, that uplifts people, that gives them hope to be alive, to share, to create, to enjoy life. Find a way to do that from within and share it with us. You never know, you may be the one that creates the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You may make the next Hellboy, the next Invincible, what have you. But if you don't try, we'll never find out. And if you're spending all of your time creating and refining your art and your process with the hopes that one day, you know, DC will dis dis bestow that big check on you, or Marvel is going to say, hey, here you go, take the reins of Spider-Man, you're going to be sorely disappointed when you get there. Because you're going to find out they're not going to let you tell their your own stories. You're going to have to tell their stories under the guidelines they give you, and they're going to change everything that you submit to them. Because at the end, you are no more significant than a tool, a piece of paper, a pencil, a keyboard. You are nothing. They are the creators. They are everything. Remember that. So to break away from that, to break those shackles, get outside, make your own. Make your own original works. That's what I try to do. That's what I'm doing right now. When it's ready, my graphic novel will be published and put it out there, but you're not going to see it freely available online where, where it can be scraped by AI, though I'm sure there are much better artists that won't want to scrape it anyway. <laughs> but hopefully the story and the themes inside of it will touch someone somewhere. 
and as long as we reach one person at least one person that that is touched by it that's uplifted by it that's affected by it emotionally in some way then we have succeeded as artists okay I think that's about as deep as I can get at the moment thanks for watching of course buy my graphic novel when it's available please like this video and uh, if you're creative keep at it keep at it stay true to yourself that's how you do it thanks for watching I'll take